Hey everyone, and welcome to the Hemp Horticulture Series. Today, we'll be taking a look at how a closed loop grow system works. A closed loop grow system, also known as a sealed grow space, is a type of grow system that's able to seal the air in the grow space. This allows for grow spaces in areas that don't have access to fresh air. Although most sealed grow rooms don't do it for that reason. Instead, they do it because it allows for total control of the plant's environment. And almost always, this control is needed to increase the rate of photosynthesis in a plant. Photosynthesis is the process plants use to essentially grow bigger, and it requires water, fertilizer, light, and CO2. For indoor growers, as long as you're watering correctly with a good fertilizer regimen and have a strong enough grow light, the bottleneck of photosynthesis actually comes from CO2. So while typically the amount of CO2 in fresh air is around 400 parts per million. It's been shown through multiple scientific studies that by increasing the CO2 a plant has access to, it allows the plant to process more light, water, and fertilizers to increase the growth speed of a plant. Although once you hit around 1500 parts per million of CO2 in the air, the increase in growth starts to level off. So, on top of all of the basic components needed to build the grow space, the first two steps of making it a closed loop system is to first seal the entire environment so that no air can enter or exit the space, and then provide a way to introduce CO2 into the space. For smaller spaces, this is typically done with a CO2 tank connected to a CO2 regulator. And for larger spaces, this is done with a CO2 generator, which just burns gas to produce CO2. Both of these are controlled via a CO2 controller and sensor, which will turn on these CO2 producing tools anytime it senses that the CO2 levels in the grow space is lower than a set threshold. And be sure that you're only producing CO2 when the lights are on, since the plants only need it during the light cycle. Also, when it comes to releasing the CO2, try to do so as high as possible, since CO2 is heavier than air. Temperature and humidity now will also need to be constantly adjusted in the sealed space. And for temperature, this is almost always in the form of heat reduction, since both CO2 generators and just about everything electronic running in the grow space, from lights to pumps to dehumidifiers to controllers, will generate some heat. The most effective way to cool down a sealed space is with a mini split air conditioning unit Although a portable floor unit connected to fresh air outside will also work. Note that neither of these two types of air conditioning options exchanges the air inside of the sealed space with the outside air. Instead, it just removes the heat and cools the air inside of the sealed space by transferring that heat into the air outside. When it comes to humidity, because plants are constantly transpiring, a sealed grow environment will generally have to lower the humidity constantly when it gets too high. This will naturally happen with any air conditioning unit, since dehumidifying an air is a byproduct from cooling it. And you can also run a separate dehumidifier as well. Optionally, you can add in a way for exchanging the sealed room air outdoors, which requires an exhaust system and a way for fresh intake air to come in. 
similar to that of an open loop system. The tricky part of adding this to a sealed grow space is that when not in use, these ports shouldn't cause air leaks themselves. So installing something like a backdraft damper will be needed. And while this step is completely optional, there are a number of benefits that come with adding an air exchange option to a sealed environment. By building both open and closed loop systems into one grow space, you can effectively run a hybrid system, taking advantage of the outside environment when it's favorable to adjust things like temperature and humidity quickly and to save on costs. Then when the outside environment isn't favorable, you can just run the full closed loop system. Having outdoor ventilation also allows for a backup plan in case of emergencies if something breaks down. And there's also the concern of if something goes wrong with the air quality in the sealed space. It allows for a quick replacement of that air. I mean, most sealed environments will only have a CO2 sensor. So that's the only thing that can be tracked. But there can be other things that can build up in the air, such as ethylene gas, which is produced by both the plants and as a byproduct of a CO2 generator. And this could negatively affect the plants if the concentration of it gets too high. So yeah, if you can, having the backup air vents just gives you more options in your sealed environment. Another optional piece is an air scrubber to remove the plant smells from the grow space. And depending on your grow setup, this can be placed in two spots. If you need to scrub the smell when the air inside is ever exchanged with the air outside via an exhaust fan, then all you would need to do is install a carbon filter on the exhaust fan. If you want to scrub the smells from the room itself, then you'll need to have a carbon filter and then an uh, inline fan pulling air through it. Here you can see that for this setup, it combines both the carbon filter inline fan combo with the CO2 tank and regulator, so that when the CO2 enters the grow space, it's being pushed up by the air scrubbing setup. Finally, remember that a sealed grow room is better suited for experienced growers who've already maxed out their potential in a space and are looking for alternative options to improve their harvest. Because not only is a closed loop system significantly more costly than an open loop system, but if the plants aren't already growing in an ideal environment, the boost in CO2 really isn't going to translate to an increase in yields. So if you're a new grower, you can start off trying a closed loop system, but the money might be better spent to first invest in a good set of grow equipment and start with an open loop system first. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch. Available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.